What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com, back with another SketchUp rendering tutorial for you. So last week we talked about the basics of getting Twilight Render installed on your computer. Um, so like I've like I said, Twilight Render is going to be the software that I'm going to be talking about, or that I'm going to be using in these videos because the hobby version is free and it has all the features so that everybody can kind of follow along. Um, so this week we're going to talk a little bit about setting up a scene and getting materials applied to our model. So let's go ahead and jump into it. Like I said, we're using Twilight Render, uh, the hobby version, in order to uh, work with this because it's free. Uh, you can download that at twilightrender.com. Um, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to set up our scene. And so what I've done is I've created just kind of a base right here, and then I've just created some spheres. And um, a, lo a lot of rendering tutorials use basic shapes like spheres just because they communicate the principles, and then you can turn around and you can apply those um, to different things. And we're going to be talking about other things like interior renderings and other stuff as we go along. But for right now, I just want to go through kind of the basics of getting materials applied to your model. So... Um, first thing we're going to do is we're just going to apply some basic materials to this model. So I'm going to color these just different SketchUp basic colors in here is basically what I'm going to do. So I'm going to come in here, I'm going to use a yellow color over here, I'll come in here and use this purple color over here. And then um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the wood texture, and by the way you can find all of these in the materials section of SketchUp, these are all just stock materials that are in there. Um, and I'm just going to use the wood veneer one material and you may need to come in here and just kind of uh, adjust the size of it so that it looks correct or you can just model this to scale so that it won't be a problem so all I did is I selected the wood veneer material I applied it to this face then I came in here and I just adjusted the size of it so you can come in here and you can change that until it looks the way that you want it to look and you can see how that's just kind of changing the size of the image that it's applying to this. So once you've come in here and you've just applied some basic SketchUp materials to these objects, we can come in here and we can run our first render. And remember in Twilight Render the window looks like this and it's got all these different options for adjusting the size, um, it's got all these different presets and stuff like that and the presets just make everything a little bit easier we'll get into those a little bit in a different video but basically all you want to do is just use this drop down um, find the easy section and just click prelim so select prelim and then click this play button right here and what that's going to do is that's going to run your first render so you can see what this does is it comes through here it kind of like applies light to all these different materials it adds some shadows and stuff like that but it's really just not that interesting of a render you know it's just kind of applying light to like a basic color right here and stuff like that so we're going to go in here and we're going to adjust these different materials using the material templates um, in Twilight Render. And so you can go ahead and close out of this window. Uh, we're not going to use this this particular image. And all you're going to do is you're going to go up to the Twilight Render toolbar or the extension section, the Twilight Render section. You're going to select the Material Editor. So that's going to be this little paintbrush looking thing, right? Or uh, this paint bucket looking thing right here. So go ahead and click on that and that's going to pop up this window that's your Material Editor. And it's pretty simple. It's got this little um, it's got this little eyedropper thing that you can use to select different materials. Um, and then it's got a couple other things down here that we'll talk about in just a second. So go ahead and click on the eyedropper and then click on one of your materials. In this case, I'm just going to click on this red color right here. And so what you may have in a stock Twilight Render installation is you may have this red box right here, this or this red X right here, and what this red X indicates is that this isn't giving you a preview. So you want this to be the check mark, unless your computer is really slow. Um, you can see how that kind of refreshed everything when I click the check mark. All that means is this is actually going to show what your material is going to look like when you apply a template to it. So it's better if you have this green check mark showing up in here. So go ahead and have that showing up. And what we're going to do is we're going to use a material template in order to uh, make this red color look like something that we want it to look like. So in this case, I'm going to go up to the templates drop down, and you can see all these different materials in here. I'm going to come down here and I'm going to select architectural glass, and I'm going to select common. And what that's going to do is this is going to refresh 
And what Twilight Render is doing is it's saying anywhere this color A05 is in the model, instead of making it look like that kind of flat red color, what it's going to do is it's going to come in here and make it look like this glass color. So you can see how it makes it kind of translucent or transparent. Um, but in any case, it allows kind of light to come through it. So it makes it, it makes it so light can come through it just like that. And so you can see how there's a bunch of different options in here. We're not going to adjust any of these right now. Um, just kind of leave it as is because one of the powerful things about softwares like Twilight Render is they've got a lot of this stuff built in and so you don't need to edit a whole lot of it unless you're doing a super high level type thing which we can get into a little bit later but for right now we're just going to apply a template material to each one of these so for this one I think I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to use like a brushed metal and that should adjust in just a second so that'll be a brushed metal the yellow, we can come in here and we could make it, let's see, let's make that one a tile, like a glossy tile. And then this last one, this purple color, we'll come in here and we'll select, we'll make that a different metal. We'll make that like an aluminum. You know what, no, we're gonna make that so the purple one, we'll come in here and we'll select a paint, like a glossy paint color. So we've adjusted these four materials. And now if you come back in here and you use the eyedropper on them, you can see how it retains the color information. So you can see how when I select that red color, it retains that glass information. The last thing we're going to do is we're just going to select this wood veneer. And then we're just going to use the wood. Um, let's go ahead and use the satin for the wood for right now. We'll see how that looks. So just come in here, select the wood, and then select wood satin. So now we've come in here and we've applied templates to all five of our materials in here. Let's close that template editor. So we're gonna come in here, we're gonna run another test et, or test render in here. So just come back in here, hit that play button again, and let it run through this. And it may take a little bit longer because you've got some more advanced materials in here now but let it go ahead and run through the render process. So as you can see, it's a little bit more, more interesting now. Uh, you've got some kind of transparency over here. You've got kind of light shining off of this. There's a little bit of a reflection of the different spheres in this image right here, but it really doesn't look all that good. And part of that's because we're running it on preliminary, but part of it's because our environment's all wrong. So the way that a rendering software works is it applies the light from your environment to the different materials in order to uh, get the kind of feel that you want. Well, what we've got right now, and let's, let's go ahead and go into the environment editor. So we talked about the material editor. Now we're gonna talk about the environment editor. So that's either going to be in the extensions, Twilight Render, Environment Editor, or you can just click on this little sun behind, cloud, behind clouds icon up here, and that'll let you edit your environment. So you can see what that's doing is this is telling you where your lighting is coming from and what it looks like. So this is telling us that it's using the physical sky and the sun in order to apply a material to this, which is fine, but... Um, in this case, we wouldn't be using the outside. We wouldn't be using the sky and the sun for something like this. We'd probably want a more uh, a more appropriate environment in order to apply that lighting. And so what we're going to do is even if you turn the sun off, I mean, that helps a little bit um, because that gets it less washed out and stuff like that. But what we really want to do is we want to apply an appropriate environment to all our materials and stuff like that to really get the best best possible image. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a file called a spherical sky that's specifically designed to apply light properly to object renders like this. And so what we're going to do is you're going to click this little drop down right here and you're going to select sphere spherical sky and you can see what it says is invalid background image file. And what that means is it doesn't have a file that it's going to use to apply this light. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go download that. And so we're going to go to a page called Kirkathea. So Kirkathea is a, uh, another rendering software that kind of plugs into SketchUp. It's always been free. It's kind of like the open source rendering software. One of the things it has in here is it's got this kind of cool resources section. And the resources section has a whole bunch of different material libraries and scenes and all sorts of different stuff in here. 
Well, specifically what we're looking for is we're looking for this studio light section by Rayman. So go in here, download that file to your computer and that's gonna download and it's gonna come out in a zip file. And then all you're gonna do is when that comes in, you're gonna extract that file to whatever location you want. You may wanna create a new folder, kinda like I have, specifically for spherical skies and stuff like that. You may also wanna create a rendering folder for different resources and stuff like that. But you're gonna go ahead and just extract that file and that's gonna extract these HDR files in here. And so what you wanna do once you've got that extracted is you wanna come in to SketchUp and you wanna select that image in this background images section. And all you do is click this drop down, and then click on this folder and go find that file. And there's four different files in here. For right now, we wanna select the boxlight.hdr. And so when you select that, you can see what that's doing is that's applying a light to your different objects. And this is the same way, by the way, if this X is off, this isn't gonna refresh your, this isn't gonna refresh your, um, preview right here if this is on then your preview will refresh but you can see what that does is it's got kind of this light that's reflecting off of this metal sphere in your preview well you can take that and you can rotate it so that the light is in different areas so you can adjust like where that's located where the lights coming from in your model so and you can type in basically whatever you want in there I'm just gonna leave it at zero for right now but and make sure you uncheck this sun enabled box because that sun enabled box is going to kind of mess up the way that this works uh the way this spherical sky works is this lighting is already designed to make your object look the way it needs to look so you don't want the sun enabled so select that spherical sky select the background image just like this and then we're going to run our render again so if you come in here you click this render button and then you hit the play button so you can see what that's gonna do is that's gonna create a way better image in here. So you can see how this does a little bit better job of applying this stuff to your materials. You may have to come in here and select something like medium in order to really get what you want out of this. So, um, because you're really starting to kind of get a little deeper into this and you wanna make sure that it comes through here and it really kind of renders everything out completely. So you can see how when I do that, it's gonna take longer because it's gonna spend more time doing the ray tracing and everything else. You're also gonna get a better image. I'm just gonna let this run. There we go. So, and that, that is one good thing to note is the higher level of render that you have selected on here, the longer it's going to take. So you will get that higher quality image in here, but it will take a lot longer for it to get done. So, you know, if you're really planning on doing some super high level renders, uh, use the preliminary settings to make sure everything kind of looks right, and then go through here and apply your higher render preset in here. Um, so anyway, so you, you can tell this is a way better image in here of what we're kind of looking for. Um, you can see how the materials look a lot better and uh, lights kind of applied to it a little bit better. The only thing about it is it's a little dim. Um, it's not very bright. And so what you can do is there's this little box down here for post process and it says simple right here. But if you click this drop down, it gives you a whole bunch of different options for things that you can do to kind of change the way that this works and post processing is something that's a lot faster than actual rendering. So the rendering is done by applying the light up here, but the post-processing, you can come in here and you can adjust things like the exposure to make it brighter, which is what we're gonna do. So th this is processing, it's done to your image separate from the rendering process. But what we're gonna do in this case is we're gonna run that exposure up a little bit, just like this. And so you, you see when you run that exposure up, um, it brightens your image up so you don't want to go too high because it starts looking pretty washed out You know as I start getting into like the fours and fives and stuff like that So you don't really want that but you can use that to make this look like a little bit brighter Image right here So one other thing I'm going to do just because I like the composition change is I'm going to go ahead and swap this so that the glass color is right here and that my other material is kind of back in the back there so, and the reason for that is when you're using a translucent color, it's kind of nice to have something behind it that's showing through. Um, so that's one of the things about rendering is you kind of have to think a little bit about your image composition and the way that's going to look as well. And one of the tools that you can use to do that is there's this scene view. And so what the scene view does is that gives you kind of a, 
that gives you, if, if you know anything about the rule of thirds, um, one of the things about images that makes them look a little bit more interesting is if you have interesting objects, you kind of center them along here. So this will let you kind of set that up. Um, you, you can adjust other things in there as well. Um, but generally this just kind of lets you set up your composition. Um, I don't think it's going to make a huge difference in this case, but I'm going to zoom in on this a little bit, just kind of adjust the way everything looks. So I'm going to come back in here. I'm going to adjust a couple more of my colors. I'm going to change this to more of a, instead of a paint, I'm going to change this to like a shiny plastic type, type object. Um, I'm going to change this to see, and this is the power of this, um, this is the power of what you can do with this is you can come in here and you can make these changes really fast. I'm going to try something a little different with this one. I'm going to make this more of a flat type color. I'll change this one to more of a, like a metal type color, just kind of seeing what I can get and uh, all of that. So we'll come in here, we'll do that. And I'm going to change, I'm going to change the wood veneer on this to kind of a wood flat, just to kind of adjust the way that everything looks in here. Then I'll rerun this render. And one of the things to note is you can come in here and mess around with your post processing while it's going. So if you want to mess around with like the lighting or whatever, you can definitely come in here and do that while it's working. So you can start messing around with the way everything looks. You can see if you like the way that it's coming out while it's doing all your ray tracing and everything else. And so this is, this is one of those things where it's really important that uh, you make sure your materials all kind of look the way that you want them to look before you do your final render. Um, Cause otherwise you could get like a couple hours into a rendering like this and then um, have to just redo everything. So always make sure to run that preliminary render first and then uh, go from there, so. And there you go, your render's complete. So the cool thing about this now is you can take this image and you can use this save as option to go save your image wherever you want it. So you can actually save, you can save a JPEG of your rendering. So you can actually export that as an image for use elsewhere. That's where I'm gonna end today's video. Uh, leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Was this helpful to you? Are you enjoying the rendering series? I know I'm learning a ton of stuff as I go through and work through this stuff. Hopefully it's beneficial to you as well, but I'd love to have that sketch up conversation with you guys. Uh, if you like that this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new sketch up content every week. Um, if you really like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month, to help me just keep bringing you great SketchUp content. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.